Hi, I'm Richard from EnvisionSelfHealing.com and in this blog I'm going to be teaching you how to take control of the numbers that are associated with your eyesight. Uh, you'll be told by your doctor you have 2020 vision, 2040 vision, 2060 vision, or even 2200 vision. Uh, and then you'll be given a prescription, something like this, that has numbers on it as well. And these are the numbers that, that go into making your glasses. So I just thought I would give you the tools you need to understand what, what the doctor is, is doing for you, what the numbers mean when, he, when they're applied to you. So let's start with the eye chart. Um, this is the 10-foot eye chart uh, on our website under the resources section. You'll find it down there. We created this 10-foot eye chart because they're really more practical for eye exercises to have a 10-foot chart just because we often don't have 20 feet to work with in, the, in our homes or you know, around our, our living spaces. So we created this 10-foot chart uh, just for your convenience. But you'll see the numbers on it. You'll see it, well, if you're from Europe, you'll see, or actually anywhere else but the United States, you'll see the meters numbers on the right and the foot numbers on the left. But since I'm in the United States, I'll talk in feet. Uh, and you can just see the equivalents over here. Uh, so, the top line here is the 20, what's called the 2200 line, these, the E and the N there. Um, and since this is a 10-foot chart, these letters are smaller than they would be in a 20-foot chart, which is a normal chart you would see in your eye doctor's office. So a 20-foot chart, these, let, these top letters would be twice as big, but you would be expected to see those letters from another 10 feet back, from 20 feet instead of 10 feet. That's the difference between a 20-foot chart a 10-foot chart. It's the distance you stand to read it. So if you're standing at a 20-foot chart, reading usually there's only a top E usually on the top or some other letter on the top, it would be the 2200 letter. It would be twice as big as this. That's sort of the math of it all, but uh, don't worry about it too much. Just when you use the 10-foot chart, just look at the number on the side here and you'll know what, what your vision is. So, and stand 10, 10 feet from this particular chart, and then read these numbers, and you'll know what your vision is. So, uh, that's how it works. This is, you know, if you see only the top letter, you're seeing 2200. If you work your way down, it's 2000, 2080, and so forth, going down the letters. So, it's a good way to measure your vision yourself. Uh, put this at 10 feet, and before you start doing eye exercises, you might want to just see, oh, I can see this letter, this line, and not this line. So um, then, you, and if you can only see, uh, let's say you get 80% of the letters or 90% of the letters on a line, say you get 90% of the letters on the 2040 line, but you miss a couple, we would call that 2040 minus. That's a way of describing it. You're not quite at 2040, you're 2040 minus. However, if you got all the letters on the 2040 line and you've got a few letters on the next line, the 2030 line, or Whatever, whatever the next line is, then we would almost call it, we would call that 2040 plus. So you're sort of exceeding 2040, but you're really not in the 2030 realm yet. So that's a way that we, we talk about uh, eye chart numbers. Um, for people with really low vision who can't see the 20, even the 2200 letter at 10 feet on our chart, we would say, okay, come in five feet and see it from five feet. Now the math of this sounds complex, but it's really very simple. You're coming in five feet, that's half the distance, you just double this number. So if you see this line at five feet, you just double the 2200, now you're seeing 2400. If you still can't see it at five feet, move into two and a half feet. Two and a half feet is one quarter of ten feet, or four times two and a half is ten feet. So you multiply this number by four. So now you're seeing at two and a half feet, if you see these letters, you're seeing 2,800. Just multiply 200 by four. That's how the math works. Um, so that's, if, if you have low vision, that's how you deal with it. You move in closer, first try five feet, and then if you can't see that, then move in at two and a half feet. If you can't see that, then the measuring gets a little hard to do. The calculations get harder to do after that. So that's how the eye chart works. This is how can you, you can see your how you're doing on the eye chart and how you can measure your vision in terms of the 20 slash scale, slash whatever scale. 
So in general, this means, <laughs> this is what people get confused about. Okay, so if your vision is 2080, this means that a normal person with 2020 vision can see a a one line at 80 feet that you can you have to move up to 20 feet to see. So your more sharp-eyed version person is behind you at 80 feet from the chart. You have to be 20 feet from the chart in order to see the same line that they see from 80 feet. So that means you have 2080 vision. I know it's kind of complicated, but that's the way it works. Um, yeah, so that would be like if they're at 80 feet and they can see the 2080 line, right? You have to get 20 feet to see that 2080 line. That means you have 2080 vision. Don't worry about it too much. But that's that's the way these numbers were created. Uh, and for you, you you guys using European stuff, 2020 is 66, and the math works up from there. I think the yeah the 2200 is is 660. So anyway, that's how the eye charts work. Um, okay, going on to prescriptions. Uh, you. In general, actually, they won't, unless you have low vision, they won't say you have 20, they won't, probably won't even tell you you have 20, 40 vision or 20, 60 vision. They might, uh, but usually they slap glasses on you and tell you you're to 20, 20, and they wouldn't even go into that scale too much. This is the other thing they won't tell you, is your prescription. Uh, so, there is, uh, in general, just two, there are other things in here, but in general, there's two things on a prescription. There is myopia the nearsighted prescription, and there's the astigmatism prescription. Now, if you remember, uh, well, maybe you don't remember, this is the first time you've seen this. So, the eyeball is a sphere, a spherical object. It doesn't look like it, but because we only see this part of it, but these, these globes inside our skull. And uh, myopia means that the eyeball is getting longer from front to back. So, Here's the spherical eyeball. It's elongated from front to back, so it gets sort of, you know, oval shaped. Essentially, if you looked at it from the side, it would be oh, it would be this shaped, not that extreme, but this shaped. And that comes from looking close all the time as children. Uh, if we were in school, that's when myopia tends to happen. If you're looking close all day in school your eyeball actually starts to adapt to that. It becomes longer. Um, that's where the, the source of myopia is. There's other forms of myopia too, but we won't go into that. Um, and it can get worse as an adult, but in general it happens uh, up to age 20, and then you slow down your, your myopia progression. So that's myopia from front to back, the eyeball getting longer. Stigmatism happens in the cornea, which is this, so there's the white of the eyeball, which is the sclera, and then the cornea is really just a transparent extension of the sclera. It's really kind of the same thing, but one's white and one's clear. And the cornea is where stigmatism happens. I guess there's some in the lens, but mainly it's in the, in the cornea. And the cornea is supposed to be, again, a spherical shape. Um, but what happens is it becomes uh, torqued in one dimension. So it's no longer a sphere. It gets kind of football shaped. One of those circular dimensions gets shorter and the other one gets longer. So you get kind of an elongated sphere across the cornea. And that creates, um, instead of a, an object being projected perfectly sharply back on the retina, it actually gets projected as two things because of this squishing. You get two, two images, really. And depending on the degree of, of astigmatism, it can become two distinct things or two kind of slightly fuzzy things. And the myopia plays into that, too. So um, that's how you get astigmatism. And the way you can see whether you have astigmatism, if you can see that some people can't because of the myopia, but if you close one eye and look at a very sharp single object, you, you will see it as two objects, one object that's pretty sharp and then another one right next to it that might be faint or fuzzy. So that's astigmatism. If you're looking with two eyes and see two objects, you could have double visions, what's called strabismus. 
So that's, you have to eliminate the two-eyed double vision before you see if you have astigmatisms. You, you cover one eye and, you know, look at a telephone pole or something really distinct against the sky and see if you see two telephone poles. And that's astigmatism. That's the effect of astigmatism. All right, so now, so you have myopia, you have astigmatism. On the, uh, this is my prescription from a few years ago, and I don't know if you can see this. Um, so what you'll see on the prescription is there'll be a uh, OD, this is all Latin, OD and OS. And the OD refers to your right eye. I don't know what the Latin words are, but the OD refers to your light, right eye. OS refers to your left eye. Latin words. Um, and that, that's what these two columns are, or the two, two rows are, are O-D-O-S. Now, um, and it actually in mind, see they have distance and near. So if you had bifocals, you would have a distance prescription up here and a, and a near prescription here. Uh, again, right eye, left eye. Then the next, the first column is called sphere or spherical, and that's your myopia prescription. So, in my case, I have a 2.5 in my right eye, and a 2. Point, this was a few years ago, it's not as bad as that now. I have a 2.5 in my right eye and a 2.0 in my left eye, if you can see that. So, that means, and it's a negative number. So, myopia is always a negative number. Farsightedness has plus numbers. Often, if you have bifocals uh, for your if you're getting presbyopia, and that's why you have the, the lower part of the lens is for presbyopia, these would become plus numbers. Because you, in, for presbyopia, uh, you need a plus lens. You might have a minus lens up here and a plus lens down there. If you're hyperopic, uh, then these numbers for distance would be plus numbers as well. Because hyperopia, in hyperopia, the, the eyeball is not elongated, but actually squished from front to back. It's shorter from front to back than it is from side to side. So you need a plus lens to correct for that. All right. So that's your myopia prescription or hyperopia if you had it. Be it plus or minus. Minus for myopia, plus for hyperopia or farsightedness. So right eye, left eye. The next column is cylinder. And this is your degree of astigmatism. It's how much astigmatism you have. Uh, cylinder, if you remember, is sort of a, if you think about a cylinder on its side, that's kind of the, it's a kind of describing the astigmatism. Um, so in my case, I have 1.5 in both eyes, a cylinder of 1.5 in both eyes. So I have very consistent astigmatism from eye to eye. Uh, and that's a moderate amount of astigmatism. Um, I would like to, I think it is less now, actually. It might be, I think this is now one for me. And the myopia has gotten down to below two. Anyway, so this is, uh, 1.5 is a little too much for me. I think I'm down to one now. And the last column is called axis. And that's where, um, so if the, think of the, the cornea as a clock, it's sort of the degrees, well, it's not a clock, it's more like uh, the world with degrees of latitude, you know, the, the degrees of longitude, actually. So um, the axis is where that astigmatism, off, you know, where the warping occurs. And so it, might, it happens to occur at 90 degrees. That number is not really that important to you. Um, what you want to pay attention to is the degree of astigmatism, because that's what you want to be reducing. The, in my case, in this prescription, it was a 1.5. I think I'm down to a 1 now. And again, the myopia or hyperopia, you're trying to reduce those numbers. Um, it's going to be hard to get this sometimes. I had to convince my optometrist, who actually was, is a, a behavioral optometrist. So he believes in eye exercises to a certain degree. And that's why he was willing to give me this. But a lot of times, you have to really coax your optometrist to give you those numbers. Because uh, they think you're going to go off and uh, buy cheap glasses online or whatever, which you may want to do. I'm not uh, completely opposed to that, but um, they're trying to save their income stream by keeping those numbers to themselves. 
but you just want to know them because you want to keep track and see how your numbers are dropping uh, by doing eye exercises. So, those are your two tools. Uh, at least for errors of refraction, you're going to be using the, uh, for myopia astigmatism, you're going to be using your prescription. And the only way you can do this is go get your eyes examined and try to do it in a consistent place with someone who's cooperative. Um, and, this, and, and once you've done that, once you've established a relationship with someone, maybe you can then convince them to reduce your prescription. Um, we like to get uh, like a half a diopter off your normal prescription or get, you, get yourself corrected to the 2040 line as opposed to the 2020 line in the office. That would be a reduced prescription. And uh, that's sort of a whole topic unto itself. But we, we believe you can get reduced prescriptions and wear those instead of the strongest glasses and you'll actually wean yourself off glasses slowly and your eyes get better by wearing those reduced prescriptions. So those are your two tools, the, the eye chart, knowing where you are, seeing on the eye chart, and you're looking at your, being able to read your prescription and be able to get it is the tricky part. Um, I wish I had kept mine over the years because I have, I did keep track for a while and I knew I was up to about 4.75 at my worst. Uh, That's probably when I was 30 or something like that. That was up to 4.75 and this is a few years ago. Um, so that's over a 25 year period I went down from 4.75. Well, then I did not discover eye exercise probably for 10 more years. So probably over 15 years doing eye exercises, I brought it down from 4.75 to now about 2. Um, the astigmatism is, is harder for me to, to deal with, quite honestly. I haven't gone as much down in astigmatism. Uh, so that's how you, those are the tools, the numbers you can use uh, to take control of your uh, sort of your eye vision, uh, health state of your eyes. Uh, these are very important numbers for you and uh, it's good for you to know how to use them and to get control of them. So good luck trying to, trying to establish a good relationship with some optometrist that will help you out with this. Uh, it's always very valuable to do that. So um, anyway, so take that information and work with it and see for yourself.